That's when one of the suits got this horrible idea. They unplugged the equipment, drained all the oil, got on with a deep fat fly, deep fat fryer, <laughs> <laughs> with a dead cat. What? I know. <laughs> <laughs> you never heard a health inspector scream because that shit is blood curdling. I'll, I'll, I'll be fully honest i have not learned anything i That's just fine. why i've been uh, uh so yeah i was gonna i can't find the script, <laughs> the script? oh right yeah i put it somewhere else and played myself are you alright? Yeah, I'm just, my pencil thing stopped working, so I'm just trying to see if I can plug it in, but it doesn't want to. I imagine after no, having to charge up a fucking pencil. I know, who'd have thunk? We're like that by my day. Okay, cool. I need a smoke. See you in there. <laughs> Alrighty now, I'm going in. Goodbye now. <laughs> now, I personally believe that madness isn't a thing that you are as much as a thing that you do. I believe it's very much like their tobacco addiction. Well, I'll be. <laughs> uh, I said, oh, would you look at that? What? Well, well, well. I feel like at some point we're going to have to do all this in an American accent. Yeah. I feel like at the wait, wait, at the very last performance we should do it in like really weird southern accents and not tell anyone we're going to do it. Don't even tell Sarah that we're going to do it. <laughs> and that'll be the day that like some really important casting person's in and we'll go <laughs> And they will stand up in the aisle and go, By Jove, I've been meaning to cast two southern actors for a long... Uh, God. No, don't say that. You had a right to ask. It's not like I was being the most considerate friend on earth. No, no, don't say that. You're not obligated to keep me informed of all your private affairs. No, don't say that. I should have at least told you I was okay. No, don't say that. You're... I'm sure you had other things to think about. Ah, sure uh, it's based because these two lines are like exactly the fucking same. Well done, Paul. <laughs> well done, Paul. Big brain man. Big brain. Big big boy. Big brain boy. Anyway, uh, sorry. Can we go from the top? Yeah. Cool. Well, I think Acts One and Two are basically. In the bag, yeah, we are now we are now halfway through this fine play. Dream, and by that I mean fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's, <really> <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Very good. So I was literally about to go to bed. You know, I was reading, just um getting ready and all that and then Sarah texts me out of the blue says why have you disappeared off spotlight which if you don't know spotlight is like where my actors cv is it's like the hub of actors um and I checked so my my spotlight cv 404 and um I don't know what happened I mean I I, I have a direct debit for renewing my spotlight membership but apparently that didn't go through somehow but in my absence it seems like some some problem has sprung up because of my name so if you don't know there is already another british actor called paul bradley which is why i put the m in the middle of my name 
in order to be distinct. And, um, you know, so Sarah reassured me that that would be enough. Um, but Spotlight seemed to be flagging it as an issue. Uh, and if they really put their foot down on this, then I could lose the right to my own name. <laughs> which is not good at all in any way, shape or form, because I've already been credited as Paul M. Bradley. Um, I've gone for years as Paul M. Bradley. Uh, like all my affiliated links are called Paul M. Bradley, so I'd have to change all them. Um, it's what I'm going to be credited in the play as, you know? It's what I'm going to be making my author's name when I publish my book. I mean, it's just, it would be a sort of disaster if I had to change the name. And I mean, I, you know, I am Paul Bradley, you know, I am Paul M. Bradley. I don't know what else I could possibly change it to. And it's just really quite terrifying. I mean, I literally feel sick right now. Because I could just lose the right to my own damn name. <laughs> Only one thing for it, you know, I've just got to, I've got to fight the other Paul Bradley in Mortal Kombat. <laughs> you hear that, Paul Bradley? I'm coming for you. There can be only one. <sighs> Not really. Don't know, just, uh, the nothing. Not for want of it. That should be hasn't happened. All right. Not really. Don't know, just hasn't happened. Uh, I think it was supposed to be just um, Act, Act three. 3, Part 1. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Cool. Okay, marvellous. Should we just uh, go through that and then see where to go from there? Sure. Cool. Okay, so Act 3, Part the First, some music happens. <laughs> Every music, time. Music, 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 music. music. Oh. Hello? Mum? Can you hear me? Oh, Dad! Dad, yeah. Not gonna lie, I'm weirdly attracted to you right now. David? I've made a terrible mistake. Hey, yeah, wait! I'm all right. I'm all right. <laughs> I would like one of those cakes, thanks. You made a terrible mistake. No, that's just my line. <laughs> oh, right, okay. <laughs> you do? Yes, I would like <laughs> one of the cakes, please. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, the bit where... So, he's kind of mid-monologue, and then I come in with, I thought you were just being polite. Is that, like, is she still joking, or is it, like... Is she realising what he's trying to say? Just realising. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I think that David kind of sees, saw, sees, seesaws. Uh, <laughs> Sophie is like a kind of lifeline. I'm sorry about the jokes and everything. She's like dead serious. Oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Even though he doesn't mind. I think basically this is the moment when this is the moment when Sophie really starts to understand what an impact she's had on David's life. Yeah. This is like the moment when she realizes that she actually has a sort of I'm not sure if responsibility is the right word, but it's not she cut like fun blitzing is it she it's kind of when she sort of 
decides to stop fun blitzing. Yeah. There's a difference, I think, between someone saying I I I'm depressed and I'm depressed. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Because one one prompts a sort of, hey, it's alright, don't worry about it, you know, and the other one prompts a fuck, you know, I am yeah. actually yeah. I I think it's sort of. I think a lot of what Dave. I think a lot of David's sort of thing is like. It's, there's a there's a, a comedy sketch I I saw, where it's a guy who, um, it, it's bit following on 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 this train. It might take a while, but basically there was a comedy sketch I saw about uh, a man who has a medical condition where everything he says sounds sarcastic mm-hmm. so he's like oh i'm sorry about my behavior i've got a condition i can't emotionally connect to anyone i'm dying inside <laughs> you know and and that's kind of in a way like it's almost david's situation because like Although he's saying, although he says this sort of stuff, because it's coming out of his mouth, because it's coming out of, you know, someone who's sort of in a little, in a cardigan and a, you know, who's, you know, a sort of a cinnamon roll type person, you can't actually believe that this guy has like, you know, well, virility and passion and, you know, feels aching despair because he's almost, uh, allowed himself in a way to become a sort of cartoon of himself sure did you think like she feels bad for not seeing him yeah yeah and i think the no really i'm sorry she is trying to press that she's trying to push that past the the through past the I'm going to pull up a David Lynch quote. The suffocating rubber clown suit of suffering. Okay. Trying to get anywhere in the arts is uh, like beating your head against a brick wall, uh, hoping that you can punch a hole through it just by the power of your own skull. Um, yeah, still no word on the, um, the name situation with Spotlight. And, um, there was a, an avenue through which I was hoping I could get the book, uh, The Steel Chrysalis, um, published or at least get the beginnings of it. That's kind of fallen through. It will test your patience, this this job, this industry. It will absolutely... I feel like I might... I might go mad. <laughs> um... But I... I, I I've got nothing else. I've got no backup, you know? It's either I, I end up a writer and an actor or I just drop out of society, you know? It's that, it, that's, that's what it is for me. I, you know, just, uh, just leave the world behind and um, go to a Buddhist monastery or something. And right now that Buddhist monastery is starting to look quite appealing. <laughs> I swear this though, I seriously, I swear this, if I do manage to get in, if I can, if I beat the system, which is essentially, it's rigged against you, but if I can beat the thing and get into this and, and make a name for myself, I'm going to do everything I can to, to lower the ladder to others. I, I'm not a logistics man, I, I don't know how to produce anything, but if I can in any way set up some kind of foundation just to to help 
people starting out, you know, make contacts and, and, and just get a leg up. God damn, I'm going to fucking do it. <laughs> Cause this is, this is hell. This is ridiculous. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go meditate now. Hopefully the situation will be resolved by the end of today with the naming thing. As for the book, I have got a long road ahead of me, but this isn't a thing about the book, it's about the play, so sorry about this digression. Just a few weeks to go now, and the script is now completely learnt. I mean, probably not the greatest achievement on earth. I mean, I did write the thing. I mean, if I can't learn the script, then <laughs> who the hell could? Hang on. Uh... Just, uh, just wondering, do you, um, do you have a map at all at home, or? Yay! We did it! We did that! Yeah! That's the, we, 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 we've learnt the whole thing! That's mad. That's the play! We've got a whole play in our brain! Wow. We got play brain. That's crazy. That's mad. So, yeah, I guess... I'll just go over and solidify it and keep... Just keep running it. Just keep running it. Hmm? Just keep running it. And then well, it's only a few weeks to go until we're... Uh, until we're yeah. not in person. Three weeks, is it? Yeah, more or less. Perfect, perfect. You looking forward to it? Yeah, buzzing. Ah, I still do. I'm. I'm still having trouble comprehending the fact that it's really happening. Yeah. I. I. I think it's not going to be real until I'm actually in Brighton. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> uh, be good. Yeah. It's. It's weird because like, I've been talking to like relatives and friends, and it just feels like every person who has been in my life for the last twenty years is going to just be there at various stages. So it's going to be like a weird sort of recap on how my life's been going so far that's nice yeah oh, good luck with all the uh the other things you <laughs> you're doing thank you <laughs> 50 uh, other projects you've got going oh uh, yeah uh, it's weird as well because it will all well obviously not lambda that was but i feel like everything's going to culminate like around the week of the play or like so like the fifth of the fifth of june when we're done like everything that I've been working on will be done. <laughs> it's just gonna be like. <laughs> so basically, what's going on here is that this is the nexus point for multiple fates to converge. Yep. Nice. Little update on the uh, name situation. Uh, I phoned them up and said my direct debit's uh, got a bit of a problem. Can I uh, renew it? I renewed it. I'm back on spotlight. Didn't even ask about the name. <laughs> Didn't even ask. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Okay, well, that was a long walk up a windy beach to a cafe that was closed. <laughs> so I made this vlog to document the creative process of uh, putting on a play. And... There is one element of that process which I have not talked about uh, before. And that is that the character of Sophie and um, a lot of the elements of her of her life are based on a friend of mine, Ruby, and the events of her life. Uh, I didn't mention it because, uh, well, I got her permission to uh, write the play before I even begun. Uh, but the reason I didn't mention it here was because basically uh, the parts that are based on her, it's based on the worst point in her life. And uh, I wanted to respect her privacy. Um, but 
she has spoken to me uh, since then and she's said that she doesn't mind being mentioned. So I would like to, to mention it now. <laughs> um, what can I say about Ruby? Um, well, I met her at a, a National Youth Theatre casting audition and we got on extremely well almost instantly, which I mean, I think that's quite a good start for a friendship if you get on. <laughs> Um, we, we talked for a while on a group chat, uh, which was made up of a few other people who were at that casting audition, but very, very quickly, uh, we had to shunt over to a private conversation because not one, the conversation was turning into literally just us. I think the other two people didn't even get a word in. And also it was getting extremely personal very quickly. And, um, I found that Ruby was and is one of the most open and honest people that I know. She has a remarkable capacity uh, because she's very much aware of her own flaws and struggles. She is very accepting and accommodating for the flaws and struggles of others, which is a quality that I greatly admire and aspire to in my own life. Um, she has a remarkable passion for the craft of acting and uh, of writing and a, a wonderful vocabulary when describing the things that she loves. I remember once we had a, we were on a, we were talking about our favourite books and that. She was going on about um, Lolita, which was her favourite book at the time. She was talking about it and she 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 would go on for 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 so long just about how how much it broke her heart and how much she empathized with the characters and you know the the struggles involved she could tell you anything about the tudor era she's extremely passionate about about um history um and i on a personal level I found that very quickly I could tell her almost anything, well, anything actually, um, which I've got friends and family who I can also, you know, I think talk to in that way, but, but Ruby was a, it was a particular help for me because I was uh, at the time from that period of about 2016 to 2019, uh, going through uh, high functioning depression really really bad um, and on those sort of uh, <laughs> on those times when uh, I would suddenly be filled with a sort of yawning chasm of despair I could uh, just talk to her and uh, it was possible she was also going through the same thing <laughs> Um, but you know, in a way it, it did actually make it easier to talk to her because she was going through it at, at the same time as I was. We were in the trenches together, if you will. That makes it sound a bit more grim. I mean, we had a lot of, a lot of laughs too. So when she, uh, disappeared, uh, from the internet for about a year because of, uh, circumstances that I wouldn't be aware of until I got back in contact with her. Um, yeah, I missed her. I missed her a lot. Um, but then a year passed and uh, we both, I think, uh, underwent our own sort of separate healing process. Um, and when we met back up, it was... Um, felt good it felt good the events of the uh of, of our actual reunion were very much nowhere near as dramatic as that's what i've written in the play we mostly just had you know a really nice time <laughs> just chatting i don't think i really properly understood in here um how much her friendship meant until I wrote the play uh, because 
although the, uh, as I say, although the events of the aforementioned reunion and uh, a lot of the elements of the David character, who's basically just a me stand-in, a lot of his stuff is is kind of exaggerated and fictional. But there's still there's still a, a real emotional truth to it. So Ruby, if you're watching this, and I know you are. This play is uh, dedicated to you, my friend. And uh, I hope I've done you proud. See you at Brighton. <laughs>